Welcome to the Land Geek Podcast, your resource for information and tips to making money by buying and selling land. Let the Land Geek show you how to make a passive income by working smart, not working hard. Learn strategies and tricks to make money buying and selling raw land today. And here's the man that's going to help you do that, the Land Geek. Hey, it's Mark Podolsky with thelandgeek.com, and I am thrilled and honored and privileged to get one of my star coaching students with me this week from TammyLand.com. Jeff Axton is on the podcast. Jeff, how are you? Good. Thank you, Mark. Nice to be here. I'm, I'm so glad you could take time out of your busy schedule to uh, grace us with your land investing knowledge. And uh, especially as, you know, as a, as a coaching student, because I know uh, a lot of, you know, Perspective students and or new students always want to get you know someone else's perspective on this business besides mine because uh, you know if coming from me it always sounds self serving so let me just ask you how is it going? Uh, great, great. Uh, I know a few. I've gotten a couple emails over the last few weeks. Um, people asking me how the the uh, mastermind sessions are going. Is it helping me? Is it helping my business? And and yes, it is. It it. Uh, it forces you to work on this business because you know, um, you know, whatever you go over the week before, you have to work on the following week, and it just and it grows. So, um, yeah, it does help. It does help to be always active with it. Yeah, I, I love mastermind sessions personally. I, I get so much out of them. Because, yeah. Uh, not only does it make you think critically about your own business, but um, you learn so much more from the room and the other people what they're doing than just what you're doing in your own little world. Um, and even when it's just three of us or the four of us, it's, it's just great. So, um, I, I think it's really, really valuable and hopefully we'll, we'll continue to grow it, uh, from a, a platinum basis, um, and getting more people on the calls instead of just listening in. And, uh, I'll, I'll be working on that. So, um, e even if, you know, you've only done a couple of deals, I'll get you on a couple of platinum calls and, and, uh, and work on that. So I, I think the, the biggest barrier right now with platinum is just the, the cost of it. But, um, you know, that's, that's, a, that's just a, a problem to solve. But, uh, you know, we were talking before the podcast, and, and I don't know if everybody knows your story. Maybe I just want to tell everybody just a little bit about yourself uh, and your background because it's, it's pretty unique. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, from the city north of Boston, Haverhill, Massachusetts, and it's about a half hour north. And I'm, I'm a firefighter there, and I've been on for about 20 years. I've on the rescue truck, and uh, my dad did it. My, you know, my my grandfather's policeman. My brother's a state policeman. So uh, it, my uncle's a was a firefighter as well. So it's it's been kind of in the family all our lives. Uh, civil service, I guess. Right, right. So, um, and I did a a coffee talk uh, episode about this. About have you ever heard of Chris Hadfield? No, I haven't. So he's he's his one of his YouTube videos went viral. He's an astronaut, and he did this crazy uh, Major Tom song in space, and you see him floating, and singing and playing guitar in space, and all the different, you know, he's in, he's in the, like, the International Space Station while he's doing it, and it, it's incredible. And so he was interviewed on NPR, and you know he's talking about the very real possibility of death and and how they prepare themselves for all the things that can go wrong uh when you do a space walk or a space flight and and he just said you know he he's no braver than anybody else they just prepare more like like thousands upon thousands of hours hours of preparation so that in any scenario they're prepared for it and that really helps calm his fear and so I wanted to ask you, like, what do you do? Because you're in that same kind of field where it's it's a very real possibility of death when you're fighting a fire. So how do you handle that fear? Yeah, uh, same same as same I guess as the astronauts. We we train constantly. Uh, every shift we uh, we train. You know, you, you right when you get on the job, uh, you're learning and you're always training. So uh, for whenever we we get fires. And um, other emergencies, but uh, yeah, it just um, 
you you get used to going to the same calls, doing the same things. Every call is a little different, but it, you kind of fall into okay, this is you know step one, I got to follow this. Step two, I got to do this. Step three, and then you're always aware of your surroundings and probabilities. You know where is the safest place in a burning building? Is it in the stairwell? Is it in the you know in the back of a room? You know is it is it uh how do you where do you when you go in you got to figure out okay how am I going to get out of this way? You know is um Am I bringing a rope bag in with me? Am I going to go up a ladder? Uh, so you're always constantly looking and in, in, uh, knowing your surroundings. Uh, we use thermal imager cameras. So when we go in a burning building, you can't see. It's not like the TV where you, you, you know, we're backdraft and all those shows show the fire and everybody running in. And, and it's not like that. Uh, it's usually pitch black and you have these cameras that you use. And use ropes to to uh, go in and out and follow in, follow out, and um, yeah, it's a lot of preparation, and it's it's an experience that you know it's just it's just different. It's different than anything you've ever done. You know, the, you know, it's funny. You, you take the exam to become a firefighter. You go to the academy, you know, and and you go through these fake fires at the academy, and they have pallets burning and all this stuff. But really, you don't really know if you. If you're fit for that job until you actually get on a truck and start going to calls, and then about two years in, you're like, okay, yeah, I love doing this, or, or no, you know, this isn't for me. I, I've seen many people uh, just get on the job and say, you know what, it's just not for me, you know, and they leave. That's really interesting because I think we can apply those same principles to getting involved in the land business, right? I mean, which, which provokes more yeah, anxiety uh, in you, buying a 96-acre piece of land or, you know, fighting a fire? Right. There's anxiety and fear in, um, I guess, in both, you know, just different levels. But uh, Right. Yeah. yeah, I mean, yeah don't, you're not going to die if you, buy, right. you know, if you buy the wrong parcel. But I'll tell you what, you know, the, the idea of losing money for some people feels like a death or that, that fear of failure or that fear of humiliation or that fear of, of making a wrong move can feel like a death because in that sense, like you're paralyzed, you don't take action, right? Right. So, so having a positive attitude is, I think, is the most important thing in, uh, in this business, in life in general. I th for me, I, I always try to look at good things. Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, let, let me ask you, I mean, why did you buy a piece of property? Like, how did you get over that first fear of uh, okay, I'm going to buy this guy's course, and then I'm going to buy a piece of property. Like, why did you even do that? Like, it's a, it's a, it's a big step. Yeah, I think everybody everybody wants uh, you know wants to be wealthy and and liked and and have something that can, they can be proud of. And owning a business is one of those things, I think. And um, for me, I've always enjoyed real estate, and it's the thrill of uh, getting that piece of property and actually selling and, and making a profit or um, getting a good deal. I don't know, it's just a good feeling I get. Just like uh, in my other job as a firefighter, I get a good feeling of helping people. And uh, so f so I always surround myself with good things. So for me, doing the land business, I, I love it because, it's, you know, I send out my send out my mailings. I get a an offer accepted. I get excited about it, and then I sell it, and I get excited again about it. It's a, I'm helping people, so it it, it all kind of works together, and um, that's why I do it. And and you know I, these days, you know, just a job, you need to do more than one job. You know? Right. Uh, the way expenses are, you know, my wife works. I'm a firefighter. I do the land business. Um, you know, I, recently I I've gotten into. Um, is teaching that, is, uh, that, is that your phones? Yeah, sorry about that. That's a that's a land land call, which I'm not going to answer. <laughs> um, but yeah, so uh, I try to sur surround myself with good things, and this is this is one good thing. And 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 I know you mentioned before, you know, um, what's that taking that first step and and not being afraid. And it's um, you know, I, I take those steps all the time with this business and with with firefighting. And um, just for example, when I met you, Mark. You know, I, I had to uh, I had to pay when I met you for advice and everything else, and uh, that's a risk. I, it took money out of my pocket, and I and it was I was nervous. I'm like, all right, well, am I just wasting my money? 
And instead of thinking like that, I, I just kept thinking positive. I'm like, no, this will work. I know it works. And he's doing it. He, you know, uh, other people are doing it. So why can't I do it? Yeah. Yeah. You know, you know, what's interesting is, um, and I'm kind of like that too, in that I, I, I'm skeptical. I'm, but I'm also like, okay, well, you know, I've run like these mental stimulations. Okay. Let's say, for example, uh, you know, this just doesn't work. Like, what's the worst case that's going to happen, right? And I'll run this, these mental simulations. Well, number one, I'm, I'm going to own property or uh, I'm going to buy an asset or, I'm, you know, it's not going to all be terrible. You know, even if I lose money, which, in, in you know, since 2001, I've never lost money on a deal. Um, it's just unbelievable to me. But, but even if, you know, I didn't, you know, when I first started, I was really scared. But I always thought to myself, well, you know, the worst case scenario is I'm going to own land. And I knew, uh, you know, another guy doing it and he was doing well. And I thought, well, he's no smarter than me. He doesn't have some kind of, you know, secret out there. He's just buying it really cheaply and selling it for more than he paid. There's no magic formula here. Like, why can't I do the same thing? now? Then I started doing it. I realized, oh, this, there is, you know, a lot more to it than that. But, it, you know, again, it's not brain surgery, right? No, it's, it's, uh, just like everything else you prepare, prepare for that property, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So, yeah, I mean, you've got to prepare. So, uh, ju yeah, just like in your, in, in the firefighting, it's, it's, so how, what do you do then to prepare, uh, before you, you, pay money for a property well uh before i prepare i think i've said this before i you know of course i find out what properties are selling for in certain areas and i find out where people are buying and selling land and i think we had this discussion once before um you know geez do i do i go venture into some other area where no one else is I, that'll be the greatest thing there'll be tons of deals no one else is there and i think you said no no, no buy where you know where people are successful right now stay with those areas so so that's what i do as i i go on ebay i go i use terapeak i use other other software i land watch um realtor.com i find out what people are buying and selling land and i get my hands dirty i get right into that area and and do it just like dan i don't worry about the competition yeah exactly it's just so much so many deals out there it's it's there's not enough people doing this and it's you know it's it's work it's not Hey, you know, you know, a couple of people that I work with see me doing this and they say, geez, Jeff, how do I get into it? And I said, well, you know, you can get into it. It's just, it's not, Hey, I'll buy a land piece of land tomorrow and sell it in two days. It's just not like that. It's just, it's a business. Right. <laughs> you have right, to treat it like right. one. Yeah. So, yeah. So tell me about your, your, uh, your brother-in-law, like you helped him sell a piece of property. What, what did you do and how that. It, it's my brother. My, oh, oh my it's real... your brother. Okay. Your brother. Yeah. Yeah. My real brother. Um, you know, we always, we've always done uh, deals together, real estate in the past and, um, the land he hasn't really ventured into. He, I don't know if he just doesn't understand it or doesn't really. And he came to me recently and said, Jeff, I, I want to learn what you're doing. And so, um, so I gave him, a, I basically gave him a piece of land that I bought and he paid the same amount. You know, I, I didn't make any money. I just gave him the piece of land and, and, uh, I said, here you go. I said, do whatever you want with it, Phil. You, you know, this is what I paid for it. You pay the same. So he took it and um, went on Facebook, Craigslist, and ended up selling it. Geez, in about three or four days, and on Facebook, and uh, to one of his friends that loves land in Colorado. It just happened to be—I uh, don't know if it was a coincidence, but uh, anyways, he he sold it, and, and we're working out the deal now. And uh, he's getting ready to buy another one. So that's uh, no, you know, he's getting ready to buy another one. Is he gonna is he gonna go to you, or is he gonna go and and make offers? Uh, he will be making offers. I'm going to help him out uh, just because he's my brother and I take care of him. So um, my older brother, by the way. <laughs> and so, uh, but uh, yeah, no, I, I'll give him a couple, just get him rolling. And then, uh, and then once he's rolling, then we'll, um, you know, we'll get into the mailings next just doing step by step, you know, and it's nice because this business, if you want to bring a partner in or another friend, what's, what's great about it is okay, you buy a piece of land over here and I'll buy a piece of land over here or the same area. 
and you sell yours, I sell mine, and you can do it almost together, but not not with each other. And there's no financial, you know, I mean, there's no financial friction, you know. Right, so. right, and, that, and that's how Duran and I started. Uh, right, it, it was like a coopetition, like we weren't really competing; we were kind of cooperating, and we were buying in the same area. I mean, he had his reserve land, and I had frontier properties. And we would, you know, we had separate deeds for each deal, so we didn't commingle any funds. But we were still buying in the same area. We were still sale, selling in the same area. It's just there was just no competition. There was tons for both of us. Yeah. So it, it was great. Um, but you, you, so you don't. I mean, do you ever have like your your buddy say, "Here, Jeff, I'll give you fifty thousand dollars. Go invest it for me." You know, you do the work and just give me a ten percent return. I do with my my mom and dad. They uh, they give me money and they we've done this for almost two years now. They've been giving me money and they've been and it's nice. I've been able to build up a little nest egg for them, and they use it for uh, they have horses, so they use that money that the you know I have monthly income coming in for them now, and so they use that for all their horses and and I just recently sold a piece for them and I gave them a few thousand. So it's 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 a great feeling being able to do that for them. You know that's so, great. Uh, yeah, so I don't. Uh, I do take money from them. And that's that's about it. I I do not. I, I I don't like taking money from friends. I I I would offer that to them. Uh, maybe uh, you know someone very very close. But I, I just not. I don't need to yet. You know, right. I, I, I can do this myself. I built up enough that now I can do this on my own without anyone's help. So, and that and that and that does happen. It just takes a little time. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and you know, getting back to fear. Um, when I first started, I didn't want to take anybody's money because I was afraid I'd lose their money. And, yeah. uh, you know, looking back on it, my competitors that were bringing investors, they were doing 10 times the volume because they had so much more capital than me. But when things went south in 2008, uh, they completely went out because they were over leveraged. And so, you know, here I am still, still doing it. So, uh, you know, that's that's not here or there, but um, I don't know. I I, I, I kind of go back and forth. I, I've I've got an investor on one deal. Um, we just started together, and uh, I think it's going to go well. Yeah, it's, it's it's a different sense of responsibility. I've gotten my parents into deals, and um, you know they were super happy. And uh, uh, you know, again, I wouldn't ever do a deal with my parents unless I you know I knew I was buying it so inexpensively. That there was no way, and and you know, truth be told, I, you know, I've never lost. So, but I'm still always kind of in the back of my mind: is my luck going to run out? You know, am I going to make a mistake? But the way that we buy, it's 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 hard to kind of in, envision it. Yeah, um, same here. I've only uh, I think one deal I did uh, break even or lost maybe a hundred or two hundred dollars. I think out of all the deals I've done. Uh, and it was, be <laughs> it was, it was when I just started and it was, uh, I, I, I didn't do my due diligence. I just went by the assessor said it was worth 50,000 and I, and I bought it for a thousand and I was like, wow, this is unbelievable. And then I went and looked at it and it was swampland in New Hampshire. And, uh, and, and then I wasn't even that bad. I was like, all right, well, so what? I go, it's right beside a lake. I can make lake. I can build a storage on stilts. That's what I was thinking. I'm like, all right, great. Someone will build this. You know, a place for storing their snowmobile, a boat, and then that it had an association. So I was like, "Oh boy, what am I going to do now?" And so I ended up uh, selling it to a neighbor. You know, but uh, I think that was my only deal. The rest of them have, like you said, I've never lost. Yeah, it's it's, it's a great feeling. It's a great feeling. So, yeah. um, so getting back to fear, though, why you know why do you think that uh, so many people? don't want to take that first step. I mean, do you think, what do you think the big reason is? Is it, am I off? I mean, do you think it's fear or do you think it's something else? I think it's a, between fear and they might think uh, it's a scam. There's, a, you know, you get a lot of those people out there, they, they ask me, they go, you know, you're selling this land so cheap, but what is this, a scam? You know, right. I get that all the time. And I said, no, you know, just, my, my picture's right there, my video's right there, my testimonial, Better Business Bureau, whatever you, you know, you want to come over my house? <laughs> you know, <laughs> right, but if you right. want to do it, it's. I think in this day and age, I think people, 
think it's not real. They're like, no, no, it's not real. You know, it's, uh, there's no way he's making money doing this. You know, the, the, this is just too easy. You know, no one sell, no one sells properties. I, I get that all the time. No one sells properties for $800. You know, uh, no one sells, um, I get, you know, you just send out a purchase and sale and people sign it. No, no way. I don't believe it. You know, so you get a lot of non-believers and, and that's where it comes back to positive attitude and you can't, you just got to do it. And, I mean, that's with, you know, I, I have uh, I same for the fire department, same for all my life. Ch I love challenges and, um, you know, you're not going <laughs> to, you're not going to win at everything. Fail failure is a good thing. Sometimes, you know, you, you learn from the mistakes. So. Yeah. But. Yeah, exactly. I mean, even if you, you started doing this and, you know, your first few deals went sideways, you'd, you'd learn a ton more than if they were just home runs. Right. Right. Exactly. And, and, um, and you're going to just, you're going to realize after a few deals, you know, I'd say, geez, three or four deals, you know, is this business for me? You know, you're going to know right there. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, um, and, you know, I'm always talking about, you know, mark, total market analysis, right? You know, is the market big enough for everybody? And it's huge. There's just this huge, huge market. There's so many deals out there. And yet there's really no major, you know, billion dollar hedge funds coming in or private equity groups coming in and trying to buy up all this raw land, right? Yeah. I mean, it's no. like this incredible niche that – Yeah. Uh, People just kind of uh, don't really consider the, in the big leagues of real estate. You know, if you're a, a real estate developer, it's a different story because you're investing, you know, tens of millions of dollars going vertical on a project. So, you know, your first step is the land, but we're not buying that kind of land, right? Right. So it's it's a very interesting niche. It's, it's, it's almost hard to describe unless you've actually done it. And, and you know, you bought a piece of property for a hundred, two hundred dollars, and sold it for two thousand dollars. It's it's hard to kind of wrap your head around. Yeah, and um, I mean, I've I have friends that we've bought in the same exact counties, and I've asked people why. You know, why did you uh, sign my agreement? Why'd you buy from me? Oh, I don't know. I liked your letter better. <laughs> that was the reason why. Or you know, you might hit them. At a certain time in the year, that's different that they feel about their land than the first time, or maybe it'll, you know. So it's just even if this, even if you had the same list and you had five different investors just sending the same letters or, or mix of letters to those same people, you know, it, you just never know when they're going to accept that offer. So it's not you know. So you can have tons of people doing this business, right? Yeah. No, I know. You know, in so many lists and so much land out there, especially, you know, especially out west is, geez. Yeah. It, do people think you're crazy? Like you you, you live in, in uh, outside of Boston, yet you're buying on the, on the west coast all the time. I know. That's, yeah, that's been, that is my major business. I was buying in Florida. Actually, I started in New, New England. And then it's, it's just, uh, it's, it's a little more difficult here. The land's a little more expensive and it's not squared off. And a lot of it's not on roads. There's a lot of wetland. It's challenging to buy here. And not saying I don't. Once in a while, I do. And then I got into Florida, and, th and that was just um, very, very competitive. And uh, I was doing it, and I still do it here and there. But um, I like out west better. And, and, you know, I have people going out for me to the land, taking pictures, looking at it, feeling it, making sure it's real, you know, before I buy it. And then, um, yeah, so and then I just pass it on to the new buyer. All the information that I got. It's crazy, isn't it? So, I mean, of all the pieces of property you've bought, how many did you think you've actually gone out personally and looked at? <laughs> uh, you know, I, I think I went and visited one in New Hampshire, which was uh, a half hour from me out of probably, I'm guessing, I don't know, a few hundred. I've probably bought a couple hundred pieces so far. And one piece I've seen that's in New Hampshire. The rest I've done with... Uh, other people and uh yeah that just shows that you can you know you picture that guy sitting on the beach and and working his land business you know buying land out in colorado or wherever you know yeah, yeah i mean you're you're that you are that guy though because how, how many hours a week are you really working what's that how many hours a week are you really working i i i really enjoy this business so i spend probably two hours a day 
on this business. I usually do it in the morning. I get my cup cup of coffee. I sit out here. I I, I do my my little bit of business, and then I uh, here and there I'll answer phone calls, and uh, yeah, a couple hours. But I don't. You don't have to. You don't have to spend a couple hours. You can. I just enjoy it. So the, I just look at the more I put into it, the more money I'm going to make. So I was like, all right, well, if I want to make more money this week, I'll send out more offers. You know, so. Uh, yeah, so it's controllable. It's controllable. How much money do you want to make? How busy do you want to get? Right, right. Was there ever a point in time where you're like, I'm too busy? Am I uh, too busy on this business? Yeah, yeah. You're like, oh, this is overwhelming. Now what do I do? No, no. It just no. I just stack them up in the inbox, and then I get to them. You know, so uh, you know, you can get you can you could definitely get to that point. You know, if um. I guess you could get to that point. I just con I control it at the level that I like. So, right, right. Well, I, yeah. I mean, per me personally, I'm too busy. I, I've got literally more deals than I can handle. Yeah, I have stats of <laughs> of of, of uh, accepted offers now that I'm trying to get processed with my VA, and she's overwhelmed, and I'm overwhelmed, and uh, it's terrible. It, you know, it's it's a good problem to have. Don't get me wrong, but it's like uh, I feel badly. It's like it's like poor customer service because these sellers are waiting on me. Yeah. Um, but you know, I'll I'll get to them. Yeah, I I scale it. I scale it back a little bit. So I mean, I send out my offers every week, but some weeks I might send out two hundred. Some weeks I might send out a hundred or fifty. You know, so I really I scale it to where I want to be. Because yeah, because I, I I do coaching. Um, you know, I I have a job. My wife has a job. There's you know, my kids are nine and six, so I, I want to be around them all the time. So, uh, so yeah, so I see a lot of, but I'll tell you, when I, when the kids get older, I'll, I'm definitely going to get it even, you know, definitely get some more volume going. Yeah. Do you think you'll teach your kids this business? Oh yeah, definitely. I'm already slowly teaching them now. My, my son, you know, especially I'm like explaining, dis explaining him how, you know, geez, Chase, if you give me, um, you know, out of out of your money, you have twenty dollars in your in your bank, your uh, little coin jar here. Uh, if you give me five, maybe if we buy a land, piece of land together, you'll get a dollar. You know, every month for the rest of for the next ten years or something like that. You know, so right, I'm right. I am teaching him slowly uh, how it's going to work. You know, uh, but yeah, they're interested in it. You know. Uh, it's going to help me. Well, it's going to help me pay for their all their college and their school and, and you name it. You know, that's and, and give us extra money. So, but yeah, uh, I you know who knows if, if it uh, pans out for them. Yeah, I try to teach my kids time value of money, and their eyes start to glaze over. I've you know I've got <laughs> I've got twelve, ten, and eight. I'm like, okay, maybe we're not ready for that yet. <laughs> but I, but I, I'm definitely talking to them all the time about what I do and how I do it. And why I like it and what excites me about it, so that you know they're enthusiastic about it. I'm like, look, you realize one day you guys, all three of you, are going to have to run this, because, right? Uh, it's going to be all in that my state. So get ready. All <laughs> right. So all right, we're at that point now. Time to put you on the spot. What is your tip of the week? Uh, let's see. I have just uh, two tips. Um, I think you are uh, one of your other podcasts we talked about uh symbolology and yeah yeah okay yeah how's that going for you oh that's going great I, i'm in my 18th day i almost have my white belt and uh symbolology what it is it, it just helps you with your daily tasks getting your life organized and uh it talks and it's great because they send you emails about staying positive it gives you different articles and and you know close your door shut your cell phone off it gives you great tips on um, just staying positive and keeping the flow of your daily routine going. Because I, I know if I didn't have this, uh, it's just messy. My my life's messy. But this this helps organize it a little bit. So um, yeah, it's been great. I like it. That's great. I you know I keep saying I'm I'm gonna get into it. And I and I haven't yet because you know what I I you I mean, know before I go to bed I just literally chunk my day and like you know my big wigs my wildly important goals. Like those three big things I do in the morning. And so I say, okay, from, you know, eight to nine, I'll do this. From nine to 10, I'll do this. From 10 to 11, I'll do this. And then um, in between there or after that, then I have a couple tertiary things. And then usually I try to do all the mindless activities 
um, in the afternoon up, up until five and get as much stuff as I can get done and then go on there. So er- everything's kind of time based for me. Simple allergy isn't like that, is it? No, it's not. It's uh, more like task oriented. So it'll give you a list of tasks for the day. But I, but I, I make it a little bit different. I, I, um, I, I use my, I work on the business first. And I work on, I try to get marketing done first and mailings done. And then I go to this list. You know, then that's my regular, like you said, the whirlwind of all the rest of the stuff. So that's what I do. But I always spend a little bit of time on my business first because you can get distracted through all the other stuff. And then I then I try to do stuff that takes a couple minutes quickly. I do those first, get those over with. And then I see how I'm doing the rest of the day and kind of plan it. But um, so, yeah, it's been it's been going pretty well with me. I like it. And then um, my my second tip was uh, carbonite.com, and I know people must have heard heard of that on the either on the radio or an ad somewhere. And basically, it backs up all your files on your computer. Uh, I had a friend doing this business. He lost everything. His computer crashed. He lost everything, and he had a couple of years worth of work, and so he had to start over again. And he didn't have anything protecting his software or, or all his files, and, uh, and that's when I that's when I really thought about it. I'm like, oh, geez, I bet I better get that because, yeah, I'd be in trouble if I lost everything. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I I use something similar to Carbonite. I use Mosey, which is also offsite backup, and then I I put all my really really important stuff into Dropbox as well. So in case Mosey fails, I have Dropbox. I love Dropbox because it's on every computer and it's my phone. I just have access everywhere. And then I have two external hard drives. Uh, so in case one external hard drive fails, oh. I have the other external hard drive. And then uh, I'm, I'm good there. Now, back in the day before the cloud, once a month, I would put everything on a, on a couple of DVDs and go to the safe deposit box. So, <laughs> um, but, you know, you've got to do that. Like, you, you know, uh, you know, every business says, you know, look at your points of failure and what can go wrong. And sure enough, it will eventually go wrong in your system. So, you know, prepare for it because uh, once it happens, you can't go back, right? Right. You know, if you don't have a first aid kit in your car and your car breaks down, you can't go out and buy your first aid kit. Right. Have You know, so, you know, spend the money now and just be prepared. Yeah, and it's SkyDrive as well. I use those for the uh, the cloud for me. And, that, and that's great. I can... I can bring this business everywhere. Yeah, it's yeah, it's fantastic. Okay, great. So my tip of the week is Wordoid uh, for looking up domain names. Uh, w o r d o i d dot com. Check out Wordoid dot com. So Jeff, how do you feel about this podcast? You gonna do it again? Yeah, absolutely. It was great. All right. Well, I really appreciate you uh, taking the time. And uh, for those of you listening, listen. Jeff Shreel, go to TammyLand.com, T-A-M-E-E-L-A-N-D.com, and buy some wholesale land from Jeff. Give him some love. Uh, <laughs> honestly, he probably has, you know, better property than me right now. So, uh, you know, check out TammyLand.com. And, of course, if you can't find anything at TammyLand.com, go to FrontierPropertiesUSA.com. Check out my site there acquire some wholesale land, leave us a comment, let us know what you like, what you don't like, what you'd like to hear uh, for uh, future podcasts. And of course, please give me some love. Go to www.thelandgeek.com and download for free the Passive Income Blueprint. Uh, get the uh, Three Fatal Land Buying Mistakes ebook as well. And of course, you'll get these podcasts sent to your inbox each week. So this is Mark Podolsky with Jeff Axton from TamiLand.com saying thanks a lot. We'll see you next week. Thanks, Jeff. Later, Mark. Thanks. Thank you for listening to another episode of The Land Geek. Join us next time for more tips, secrets, and information that will help you succeed. Stay connected with The Land Geek on Facebook at Facebook.com slash The Land Geek.